matter the location from OAKLA to LV. I'm a Raider. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. We are recording this March 16th, and uh, we were filming this live. We're having a lot of fun. I'm wearing a wig because y'all made me wear it. All these questions, though, as a reminder, are answered March 16th. If you want to get your questions featured on the show, you got to use hashtag Raiders or go ahead and super chat. Hey, man, since Aguilar went to the Cheaters, okay, Patriots, thoughts on trading for OBJ? How about OBJ for a second-round pick? Okay, Nick, pretty interesting question here. So I know that OBJ always comes up in trade rumors, right? And he tweeted out today something about like second act and everyone's like, oh my gosh, he's going to be traded yet again, second time. He's just talking about his rehab. He's just talking about how he's going to be, you know, how he's going through his like second, I guess, I don't know, second second rehab. I'm trying to think of the words. They're not coming to me. So anyway, he had a halfway decent year when he was healthy last year, but we are going to go off Nick Casillo's trade idea here. What do you guys think? The Raiders, they get Odell Beckham Jr. The Browns receive a 2021 second round pick. So the 48th overall pick. Let me know who you all think ends up winning this trade. Nick, I appreciate that you were creative enough to come up with this. Type LV for the Raiders or I want you to type CLE for the Cleveland Browns. Who do y'all think wins this trade? I'll give you my answer here in just a little bit. Let's look at the numbers, though, in 2020. This is in seven games, 23 catches, 319 yards, three touchdowns. How about 2019? Full 16 games. I will say the biggest issue with Odell is a lot of people are always sitting here saying, well, I want the guy that we saw at the Giants. Since he's gone to the Browns, he hasn't been that, and he hasn't been fully healthy. I mean, 2018, he also missed four games. Sure, he still put up over 1,000 yards. Do I think he'd be a great fit with Carr? Absolutely. Do I think he'd be a great fit with John Gruden in this offense? Absolutely. However, Odell is probably going to cost a lot. So how about this? Look at this. The new versus the old Odell Beckham Jr. Because when we talk about OBJ, people want the new, right? The, the guy who was the first three seasons who put up just redunculous type of numbers or the old OBJ who has been battling some injuries. Sure, he's still talented. If you can give me the new guy, take him in a heartbeat. Give me the old guy, though. It's a little bit curious. I do honestly believe that the Browns would want more than the second-round pick. However, with the news of Nelson Aguilar leaving, I would do this trade. I would do Odell Beckham Jr. for the 48th overall pick because I don't know if you're going to be able to find somebody like OBJ. Plus, over the next three years, you basically got to pay him like $14, $15 million a year which might sound like a lot, but Nelson Aguilar just got 13. So one more time here, who would end up winning this trade? I want you to type LV for the Raiders, or I want you to go down in the comments, type CLE for the Cleveland Browns. Joshua Johnson, I'm a collector of jerseys. and been a follower of the show since I got out of prison. How can I win a jersey? Show me some love, brother, One Nation. I don't know how you can win a jersey. I know we give away jerseys once in a while here. If you want to try to get one, chatsports.com slash Raiders jersey. Hopefully that helps you, Joshua. I'm glad that you support the show. Let's go to Grizz Raider 87 After evaluating the moves made, is a trade back in the draft possible? Gathering assets seems to be where Mayock and Gruden are heading. After evaluating the moves made as a trade back in the draft, I hope a trade back happens. The issue is you can't go into an NFL draft planning to trade back. Like, that's not the goal that you would try to do. If somebody wants to offer you something, sure, absolutely. But uh, you can't go saying, like, okay, that's 100% the plan because until that happens, I just can't honestly tell you if, if it's going to work out or not. Let's go to Brandon Salomon. I love the Raiders, but this is like being in an absolute – Abusive, I can't read. Abusive relationship, to be honest. I'm not going to go that far because abusive relationships are, I think, a lot worse than anything that happens to us covering the Raiders or talking about the Raiders. But it's definitely a frustrating relationship. There's uh, no doubt about that. Brandon, appreciate the super. Let's go to Greg Romeo. Mark Davis will spend more money on his hair than the Raiders will spend in free agency. I highly doubt that Mark Davis has spent more than $26 million on his hair. If he has... It's a bad investment. Let's go to Matthew Leon here. Seabass future Hall of Famer. I think that he is. I mean, he played with the Raiders for a long time, drafted in the first round, and he was a very good kicker. So we'll see if he does end up making the Hall of Fame. He'd be in my Hall of Fame, though, Matthew. I appreciate the question. I appreciate all the Supers that continue to come in. I know a lot of people are sending in the Supers. I will get to all the drinking, all the spin roulette wheel stuff here in a little bit. I just wanted to uh, 
we'll say sober up a little bit. Let's go to El Guero Pinche. Is Quinn Miners from Wisconsin Whitewater a good replacement for Hudson? I like his play at the Senior Bowl. I'll tell you what. I'm glad that you bring up his name. This was actually one of the players that the Raiders met with in terms of a virtual conference. I, I do think that he can play center. I also know that he can play guard as well. This has been one of the players that I've brought up multiple times here on the Raiders report where I've said he is a good, talented player. He dominated at the Senior Bowl. Do I think that he, that he could be drafted by the Raiders? Yes. The issue is I don't know if he's available in round three. You might have to take him in round two at pick 48, which might be a little bit too high for me. So how about this? If you guys want to get featured on our show, you got to subscribe and you got to join our mailbags. The link is below. I'm taking off that itchy wig. I can't deal with it anymore. Seriously, hit that big red button that says subscribe. Join all of our shows. We go live every single Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. The other reason, though, I'm always telling you guys to turn on your notifications because when breaking news happens, like Rodney Hudson released or the Raiders sign Yannick Ngakwe, we're going to be breaking it down here. The other reason is because I appreciate when people go to my videos right away and when they comment. That's what I'm all about here. So here's how you turn on your notifications. And instead of just being, I don't know, not having the news right away, we're also trying to put the cherry on top. Here are the people that have commented on my video first, my last five videos. So shout out to Manny Villegas. Shout out to Andy Carlson. Shout out to iCharles1709. Jeff Wilson and XX Chavez 312. These were the first people that commented on my last five videos. So if you want to get featured in next week's Raiders report, all you got to do, turn on those noties and try to comment first. Super chat coming in from Ricardo or Pereza. Sherman and Hooker or Sherman and Anthony Harris to lock down the back end of that D. I feel like you can't see Hooker and back end of that D in the same sentence. What do you think? Possibly laugh aloud. You think about the uh, laugh aloud about you being faded. I mean, I'm definitely getting there. We're about two Chucky heads in terms of being faded. Sherman and Hooker or Sherman. I mean, honestly, why can't we do like Malik Hooker for a cheaper deal and then maybe find another cheaper cornerback option? I mean, I, I will say that I know the Raiders are obviously interested in, interested in Richard Sherman, and I love Anthony Harris. There's no doubt about that. We'll see what they end up doing. But from what I know, they didn't want to spend big on safety. So that, to me, says that they're going to go after a guy like Malik Hooker. And if they don't want to spend big on safety, that does mean maybe they're going to go out and spend big on corner, Richard Sherman. But if we're going to spend big on corner, I mean, William Jackson, definitely another guy that I absolutely love. Let's go to those Super Chats coming in here from Sean Forbes. Hey, Mitch, just supporting you. Love you, man. But dang, are we going to sign anybody today? Feels like we're taking it slow. I'm with you. I woke up this morning, and I was like, okay, I'm excited. The Raiders are going to sign a safety. They're going to sign a wide receiver. We're going to have a really, really ambitious day. And instead, they've been taking it slow. I mean, there's no doubt about that. It's been pretty frustrating. But, Sean, I appreciate the Super Chat. From what I know, I owe y'all like three roulette spins and like two shots of fireball. All right, let's go to John Gruden. Mitch, I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, John, I'm going to need something better than that. I'm sorry. I need to understand what fully happened with Rodney Hudson, why he wanted out. And if he did truly want out, what the hell is going on? All right, let's go to Bird Shirt Guy Comedy. I, birds, or it's Birds Hurt Guy Comedy, one of the two. Ross for $2.5 million with rugs. Would have been cool. I mean, John Ross for 2.5 mil. I would not have paid John Ross 2.5 mil. He's, he's not a very good receiver in my opinion. And why bring in Ross when you already have a guy like Ruggs who can truly stretch the field? If you're going to bring in another receiver, bring in somebody who's a little bit bigger. And if you want to pay somebody 2.5 million, the receiver who I've been just kind of pounding the table on, knock on wood if you're with me, has been D.D. Westbrook, who I actually do think could be a halfway decent, decent receiver, who's had 66 catches in 2018, 2019, who I believe you can get for less than 2.5 mil. The only reason why John Ross is getting 2.5 mil is because he ran a 40 time of 4.22, which is slower than Chase Sr. shotgun time, but still very impressive. Let's go to Jack Kenya coming in here. Looks like the Raiders are in full rebuild with no O-line, D-line. What do you think? I mean, judging by their offensive line moves, yes, I do think that they are in rebuild mode, and it pains me to say it. The The thing, though, is not many coaches are can confidently go in rebuild mode, especially when they're entering, what, their fourth year? Gruden can because of his safety of his contract, and it's why I didn't like the contract move because you should never give somebody 10 years, 100 million guaranteed. 
In what world do we exist in where you could enter your job and know that you're never going to get fired and get the, paid the exact same amount of money? If I didn't make a single video for the next 10 years and I still got paid for it, I wouldn't deserve that money. If John Gruden doesn't coach well, he doesn't deserve the money. Now, obviously, we got a lot of people here watching, over 1,500 people watching this bad boy live. I can't get to all your questions, and I understand that not everyone can join me during my live shows Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Pacific. So, with that being said, if you have a question, if you want to talk Raiders, hit me up on Instagram. Give me a follow, Mitchell Renz 365 All right, Super Chat time from John Woods. As an Irishman, please don't don't call it St. Patty's Day. It's St. Patrick's Day or Patty's Day. Defensive tackle, who should we sign? Out of all the defensive tackles right now, I, I, I'll be honest with you, I think I'd actually rather save the money. If you could figure out a way to get Indomitian Sue, would totally be on board for that. But if you get to figure out a way to get a guy like Christian Barmore at 17, I'd be A-OK -okay with that. Dale Webb Jr., do you bring in Kenny Galladay for two years, $5 million a year? Yes, in an absolute heart, an absolute heartbeat. Like, Dale, how about this? If I gave you a new, brand new 2021 BMW for $5, would you take it? Yeah, you would. He's going to cost a lot more than that, Dale. All right, let's go to Jordan 2, Mariota trade coming. I have not seen anything that confidently gets me to think that a trade's coming. With the deals going on around Ryan Fitzpatrick, that definitely hurts his trade value. Hell, even to Rod Taylor, Andy Dalton. When you saw these deals go down, the top teams that were the most likely to trade for Marcus Mariota, Washington football team. Well, now they have Ryan Fitzpatrick. The Chicago Bears, now they got the Red Rifle. And I mean, even a team like Miami, who everyone was like, oh, Marcus Mariota, he can be a backup to Tua. They got the Hawaiian connection. Like, that even matters. They just signed Jacoby Brissett. So, like, in terms of trading Mariota, it, this gets really, really difficult. If I'm an NFL team, I just wait for the Raiders to cut him, and then you sign him to a much, much cheaper contract. The other big issue is this. It's like you're not going to pay Mariota $11.35 million guaranteed, and then you're definitely not going to pay him if he has a great year, and you probably have to pay him up to like $16, $17 million. That's no bueno. So what do you all think is going to happen with Mariota? Type K for keep, type T for trade, or I want you to go down in the comments, type C for cut. Talk to Deshaun. All the Raiders fans, fans, that are mad at Rodney to leave because we don't want you. He will always be in our hearts as a great Raider, and he wants the ring chase. We should support him. So here's here's my issue with that statement. Am I am I for Raiders players? Yes. But at the end of the day, if you leave the Raiders, I don't see why I should be committed to you because the, Rodney Hudson, in a way, wasn't really fully committed to the Raiders or else he, he would have stayed. It's the same reason why I always say, like, I make this show for Raider Nation. I don't make it for players. I know players, a lot of them don't like me because I do speak my truth. But that's one thing that I love about Raider Nation. I think if you want to lay your heart on your sleeve, if you want to show your emotions, go ahead and do it. But I also hate, and I mean hate, when people are like, they're not real Raiders fans. That started on Twitter. It started by other people that have their first name with their first name as Raider. And I just don't, I just don't like it, Micah. I'm just being honest with you.